Okay, so we're going to go through the main group. This is like main group part two for nonmetals, noble gases, and we're just going to march on the periodic table in reverse, starting here and going this way all the way to boron. Okay? And we're going to do just the nonmetals, just this upper right hand corner. So, uh, let's start with helium. Helium. Uh, this escapes the atmosphere, so it's very light. So if you fill up your balloon with helium and waste our helium, and your balloon pops, that, that helium's lost forever. It's going up into the, out of uh, our atmosphere. Texas has a lot of interesting reservoirs of helium. Uh, it's a diluent, a diluent. What that means, it dilutes uh, various potential flammables. So for example, you might have helium when you go scuba diving to dilute the oxygen. Uh, so if there's some sort of accident, it might not be as explosive. So uh, it can be used as a diluent. It's not very viscous. It's a super fluid. Um, and it has multiple phases. Multiple liquid phases. Neon. It's one most of you know already. Uh, it's used in neon lights. So whenever you see a neon light, there we go. Uh, it, once you put a current into the gas, which is in the neon light, that's when it starts emit, to emit the color. Argon. This is also inert uh, in some welding. Uh, some light bulbs will also have argon in it. And just like liquid nitrogen, you can make liquid argon. It's about the same temperature. Uh, then it becomes liquid. Krypton. Krypton's kind of interesting. We're going to talk about this later in nuclear chemistry. But this is a product of fission. So you can actually, if you measure the amount of krypton uh, in the air, you can know the worldwide nuclear activity. So you can know what's going on worldwide, or kind of estimate that by the amount of krypton in the air, since it's uh, a product of it. And you can find out, hey, where are people are making weapons of mass destruction and stuff, but it shouldn't be. Let's go over there. Uh, xenon, halogen lamps have xenon in them. Flash tubes, it's uh, inert like the, the rest of these. Radon. Uh, this is also a product of radioactive processes. It's found deep in the earth. Okay, I want to say a little bit about compounds. What's kind of funny, so we used to call these the inert <coughs> gases. However, they're reactive, so let's not call them the inert gases anymore. We call them the noble gases. They are very unreactive, but they can react. Here's what happens. If you have a noble gas that's quite large, so for example, xenon is uh, not radioactive, but quite large. Krypton's a little smaller. If it's quite large and you have a really electronegative element, like oxygen or fluorine, pretty electronegative, they are electronegative enough to remove electrons from the xenon and even others to make a compound. So they can react in the right circumstances and form stable products. Uh, so uh, let me just note a couple examples here. Xenon F2, Xenon F4, Xenon F6, Xenon uh, O4, uh, Xenon O3. Let's just do, uh, let's have some practice with oxidation states. What's the charge here for xenon? Plus 2, plus 4, plus 6, plus 8, and plus 6. So xenon, you can lose a lot of electrons from xenon. Uh, let's... The shapes are something that you'll need to be familiar with, so this is a little bit more Vesper for you. Uh, let me just show you a picture. We'll draw some out a little bit later, but uh, you'll have to practice your Lewis again. 
xenon uh, F2, that one at the very top there, what is that electronic shape? Trigonal bipyramidal. What is its molecular shape? It's linear. It's a straight line. How about this one? What is the electronic shape? Octahedral. There's six groups. If you're not knowing this, you need to look at table 10.1 in our text, the Vesper table. Uh, what is its molecular or a geometric shape? Square planar. There's four groups. It's flat. How about this one? Oh, uh, well, let's get that. Oh, mm. okay, we'll skip that. Uh, that's not on your table. Uh, I believe that would be called uh, pentagonal bipyramidal because there's seven groups. Okay, but that's not in your in your Vesper table. Uh, you can also have compounds uh, with krypton in it and argon or mixtures thereof. Uh, according to some what's called de uh, density functional theory, uh, you can have uh, such compounds with helium and neon, um, though they haven't been determined yet as far as I know. So that's just a little bit about noble gases.